Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're going to be talking about black holes and galaxies and more specifically about a recent discovery that one of the relatively large galaxies out there seems to have a tiny black hole in the middle and that goes against our ideas of black holes, supermassive black holes and galaxies. So let's discuss this a little bit more and welcome to What The Math. So this right here is our own galaxy and this is the Milky Way and in the middle of the Milky Way we have our central supermassive black hole known as Sagittarius A star. It's approximately 4.3 million masses of the Sun and when it comes to comparing this to some of the other supermassive black holes it's actually sort of on the smaller end. But what we know about it is that, well, first of all, it's not actually that active. It's not really absorbing that much material right now, and it's also not really producing that much radiation, but it is still um, absorbing some mass. And sometimes, once in a while, we get these astrophysical jets that you see right here. But some other black holes, like, for example, the super famous M87, are roughly around 2,000 times more massive. And that's why we were able to take such a good photo of this black hole, because it's larger, it's more massive, and everything here happens a lot slower, so it's easier to take a picture. Yet there are galaxies out there, like this one right here, NGC 4395, that's roughly around 14 million light years away from the Milky Way, that seems to hide a bit of a mystery on the inside, and it's something that scientists can't really explain or understand. This galaxy is not small, it's about 50,000 light years across, Still smaller than the Milky Way, maybe about three to um, possibly even four times smaller than the Milky Way. But it is not a galaxy that um, you would call tiny. It's considered to be a dwarf galaxy, but compared to, for example, um, our partner Large Magellanic Cloud that you'll see right there. And actually, let's zoom into it just to see what it looks like. It's roughly around double the size. Um, so it's not tiny. But the mystery with that particular unusual galaxy is that we always knew that something in the middle makes it unusual. We always knew that despite being an active galaxy, what's known as a safer galaxy, where you can actually detect a lot of activity coming from the middle of the galaxy where the black hole is located, for this particular galaxy, it just seemed like the black hole was a lot smaller than we anticipated. The initial um, calculations suggested that it was maybe only a few hundred thousand masses of the Sun, which would make it roughly around 10 times or even more than 10 times smaller than a Sagittarius A star, but even that didn't really make sense. And let's actually jump to that galaxy in Space Engine so we can see what it looks like. So this is what it looks like, and as you can see in the center there, it is a lot brighter than um, other areas. And that's because its center is considered to be active. It's an active galactic nuclei. And that's because the black hole is absorbing stuff, it's creating all this energy, and technically it should be growing pretty fast, but it's not. And the recent paper that you can find in the description below discovered that uh, the black hole in the center of this beautiful galaxy is roughly only about 10,000 masses of the sun, making it the smallest ever central galactic black hole we discovered, and technically also um, unofficially qualifying this as the first ever intermediary black hole that was confirmed through various um, observational means. At the same time, it's basically an anomaly. It doesn't make sense. Now, what we understand about black holes is that they do seem to um, interact with nearby space, nearby stars, and specifically with the central bulge and the central region that we're currently entering. And this interaction then propagates to the rest of the galaxy. But for this unusual galaxy, um, the interaction is a lot more difficult to explain. Now, if this black hole is the only black hole that's available in the region, which it seems that it is, why is it so small? Why did it not get bigger? How did it not become a giant considering that it's actually in the middle of a relatively large galaxy. Even though it's a dwarf galaxy, it's still pretty massive. And most importantly, what actually makes black holes stay so small, and what makes black holes like Sagittarius A star or M87 get so big? So this discovery created a lot of questions that need to be answered. 
But before I continue, let's actually also talk about how they were able to determine the mass of this black hole. The technique itself is not um, very new, it's something that we've known about for a while, and the way that it's done is by measuring the interaction between the, the radiation coming from the accretion disk of the black hole and the um, gas clouds that are usually located much farther away that sort of orbit around the black hole and are usually the leftovers of stuff or um, various gas particles and dust that kind of settled in the orbit farther away from the black hole. And we've discovered their relationship. The more mass of the black hole, the farther away this gas kind of orbits. So for example, for Sagittarius A star black hole, which is this one right here, this would be at a certain distance, but for M87, which is more massive, it would be much, much farther away. And so the scientists behind this paper, knowing and understanding how this dust cloud works, were able to calculate that for the um, radiation from the accretion disk to hit the dust cloud, it took roughly around 82 to 83 minutes. And the way that they found this is by basically knowing that the radiation escapes and then hits the uh, dust cloud that normally will contain quite a lot of hydrogen. And when the irradiation from the accretion disk hits this cloud, it actually makes it emit very, very specific and very easy to recognize um, types of light. And so they were able to determine that it takes about roughly 82 minutes to get from the accretion disk to the cloud. And using this and also understanding the speed of the uh, actual cloud, they were then able to estimate the mass at roughly around 10,000 masses of the sun. You can find out more detail and more math, of course, um, in the paper in the description below. And, well, this discovery is very unusual. That's probably not the best word to describe it. It's very peculiar. It's hard to explain. It's hard to understand. And most importantly, it creates this new opportunity for study for us where we now know that, um, well, some galaxies have really tiny black holes in the middle and they still are active. They still produce a lot of energy, but they're not as massive as some other black holes and that is we we really can't explain we can't really understand how this could have happened and so unfortunately on this note that's really all we've discovered so far now i'm pretty sure there's going to be a lot of follow-up studies and a lot of follow-up observations to try to find out what's really happening here because it is such an unusual and such a strange discovery now, I actually also wanted to go in the middle of the um, procedurally generated galaxy in Space Engine and find out what Space Engine thinks about all of this. Uh, Space Engine is based on very accurate mathematical representations, and so here we can try to discover what the black hole is according to Space Engine. So let's go and find it right now. And it seems to be somewhere in the middle of this globular cluster because that's where I'm being pointed at. So let's go in the middle and look for that central black hole of NGC 4395. And my guess is that it's going to be larger than um, 10,000 masses of the sun. It's probably going to be massive, more massive, possibly even a million masses of the sun. And looks like we've found it. So there it is with all of its um, planetary and star companions. And that object in the middle is that black hole. But let's discover how massive it is. Okay, here we go, and there's that black hole. Let's come a little bit closer, and I think that's close enough. And according to the Space Engine, the mass of this black hole should be, technically, roughly around 990,000 masses of the Sun. And that's kind of what the logic suggests, right? But in reality, it is something like 99 times less massive. And well, anyway, that's all I wanted to mention in this video. Once we discover more about this black hole, we'll come back and talk about it again and possibly discuss some other features that we've discovered since. On this note though, that's it. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe if you still haven't. Share this video with someone who enjoys learning about black holes, space and sciences and come back tomorrow to learn something you may have not known before. Also consider supporting this channel Patreon because it does help me a lot and space out and as always, bye bye.